How's it going, Rogues Gallery? Today, we're going to take a look at one of the card games that I like to follow, one game that I really, really enjoy, but it's not one of my main games, and I'm going to talk about whether or not I think it's going to survive 2023, because we know that 2023 is poised to be a fairly rough year financially across a wide swath of different markets and the trading card market is no exception. So today we're going to take a look at Genesis Battle of Champions, an indie TCG from Canada, one that I have been covering since 2020. I was going to think if it was 2019 or 2020. I've been covering this game for a while. This is a game that's existed for, I want to say, seven or eight years. It's been around for a little while as just kind of like this small bootstraps you know, grassroots startup from Canada. It did have a recent Kickstarter to kind of push the game to a wider audience. We're going to talk about whether or not I thought that was successful. And we're going to take a look at the set. We're going to open up this booster box. But more importantly, I'm going to talk about whether or not I think Genesis is going to survive 2023. To be completely honest, maybe. <laughs> that, that, that's the thing. Maybe, and I will tell you my reasoning, and we'll go into it. I have some pretty harsh criticisms and a decent amount of praise as well. So we're going to be, as always, super genuine, talk about Genesis. And I do want to say just in general that I do feel that a lot of the smaller, less prominent indie TCGs are really, really going to struggle. Most of them are probably going to die out this year. Uh, I don't want to name names here, but uh, there, there's a good number of them. A lot of the ones that I personally don't talk a lot about that I that I don't feel confident that they're going to survive the year. Genesis is a very unique exception to that because I wouldn't consider it a, a Kickstarter TCG, even though it did have a Kickstarter. It's not really a Kickstarter TCG because it existed way before the whole Kickstarter trend. And before we get started, if you want my opinion on the Kickstarter TCGs that I typically cover here on the channel, specifically Sorcery and Grand Archive, well, there's a reason that I cover them, I really love them, and I have a lot of faith in them. So if you're here thinking about like Grand Archive or Sorcery, I have a lot of faith in those games and I think they will succeed in 2023 and hopefully thrive. I think they do unique enough things and are quality enough. They have AAA quality. They are indie card games, um, you know, that are that got their roots from Kickstarter, but they have AAA quality and I think they can compete with the big dogs. Genesis is squarely in the indie category if you're going to give it like a, a tier list it's like a it's like a b tier card game and we're going to talk about that so let's open up this booster box of origins uh this is one that i bought personally this wasn't sent to me or anything like that and we'll talk about genesis and where i think it possibly could be going some faults some positives and all that good stuff and we'll take take a look at the cards so there's some there's some cool stuff in this set so let's do it Oh, hey, Kel, what's that? Oh, oh, this? No, 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 what's underneath it? Oh, you mean the playmat? Oh, yes, of course. If you like this playmat, you can get this on redzonerogue.com. God, that was, <laughs> that was probably the cringiest shill that I've ever done. And I love it. I love it so much. Anyway, yeah, if you like this playmat, it is done with a particular grim style uh, available on redzonerogue.com featuring my two original characters, uh, Katsumi and Veya. We have more original characters coming in the future um, and you know what I can kind of show off this here with villain demon of the pits patron exclusive reward for the month of february featuring our brand new character villain the assassin uh, with art done by crovius a flesh and blood artist and one of the reasons i bring this up i want to draw attention to this art because we're going to talk about art a decent amount here in today's video. We're going to talk about gameplay as well. We're going to talk a lot about Genesis today, but art is one of the big sticking points that I believe that holds Genesis back from, you know, reaching into those upper echelons of trading card games. And I would like to show off just kind of some of the art that I have had commissioned, and we'll talk about that and, you know, what I think about that and the ramifications for all that kind of stuff as we go. But anyway, Villain Demon of the Pits, Patron exclusive reward for February. Every single month we have a new token card that we give out to the patrons. Custom cards, very, very high quality, and you can use them for Flesh and Blood and uh, maybe some other games as we progress. We're also gonna have a, you know, official splash art with this character. Um, this is just kind of like, kind of the concept art, I guess you could say. All right, so Genesis. Let's open up this box of Genesis. Uh, Genesis has come a long way since I first started talking about this game 
back in uh, 2020. You know, it's been almost three years, um, but there really hasn't been very many sets in that time. It is a, you know, like I said, a small indie game. And that's one of the things that I'm gonna talk about too, is um, they have a very modest set release schedule is the nice way to put it, right? Not a lot of sets come out, not a lot of cards. Um, the sets themselves aren't super big. And, um, you know, I definitely see that as sort of one of the negatives, sort of one of the negatives. So uh, we do have a box topper card. These boxes, by the way, uh, are, are fa fairly cheap. As you can see, the, the glue is coming undone. And this is true for almost all of the Origins Kickstarter boxes that I got. I have opened up three before uh, out of the six that I got from the Kickstarter. We'll open up this little uh, box topper at the end. This is like super spicy. This could be really cool. Um, I like this, by the way. I like this. This gives me a reason to actually open up the boxes where there might not actually be a lot of other reason. Like I said, I'm gonna be very, very honest with this. I like Genesis. I like the creator of this game, Acid. Um, but I, I do want it to succeed and grow, and I think I need to be very brutal with some of the things where I, maybe I have been a little too nice before in the past. So, what is that? Um, they might be aware, but yeah, these boxes, by the way, I think it's just kind of poor quality. Uh, even the pop, like it's really hard to to break the perforated thing to actually make it into like a display box. Like it, it works, but it just, it just doesn't feel, it, do, it doesn't feel like AAA quality. It, it, it feels like a, a budget game, kind of. Um, not kind of, it, it, does, it does feel like a B tier budget game. Um, but that's not to say it all is, so let's, let's open up some of this stuff. Um, I mean, there's a reason that I like this game, right? Uh, it's fun to play. And I think the world is fairly interesting. And I just love like these indie, you know, grassroots games, like, you know, pulling up by the bootstraps. The packs themselves are fine. They're just kind of like, you know, plastic packs. The card quality is also fine. Uh, I've seen much, much worse. They are kind of thin, but um, it's not bad. It's not bad. And so here, here's the pack layout. So we have the rarity down here. If you don't know of Genesis, this is common. Um, we have commons, uh, uncommons here, denoted by the, the green. Uh, we should have a rare coming up soon. Here we have a rare psychic blast, uh, and earth fisher. So we have two rares, kind of like flesh and blood. Uh, then we also have this token. This is, uh, a champion. You basically have a champion on the field and the goal is to kill your opponent's champion. This is Bazin, Bazin. Um, and at least for this set, the champions are double-sided. So we'll set the champions aside. And then we have more common cards. Um, one thing that I do like is that they kind of nestled the rares uh, in with all the other cards. So it kind of protects them, which is kind of cool. Uh, I will sort these just a little bit, just for my own sake. Um, I do want to talk about the art. Because the art, I think, is one of the biggest things holding this... I don't want to say holding it back, but keeping it where it is. Let me put it that way. So I think, I think art is one of the things keeping it where it is. I don't necessarily think the art is bad, but I also don't think it, I, I don't think it's AAA quality either, right? There are some cards that have not great artwork and there are some cards that have very good artwork. Some of it is also just kind of bland. Um, and it, it's, it's just kind of on a, you know, you know, case by case basis. And I, I want to say, at least for an, an indie card game, you know, art is very expensive to commission. I know, and this is what I brought it up. I have commissioned professional level art, right? But like, so, so what I'm trying to say is I know the price of the art and I know it's expensive, right? Um, but I am also just a dude who makes YouTube videos. Uh, and you know, it's my job. I do make YouTube videos as my, as my job. Um, but I'm not breaking in like a ton of money. Um, so my point is, is that I think focusing on higher quality art overall across the board um, would very much go to elevate Gen Genesis from B tier game into that like, you know, A tier category into like making it look like it's a triple A game, right? I think that's what you want to do in this day and age 
as a uh, indie game, you, you kind of just have to look, even if you are an indie game, you have to look like you're a AAA game because those are the games you are competing against and you are competing against, uh, you're basically trying to draw the attention of all of the other TCG players out there. Now Genesis does a couple, uh, ooh, we got a, we got a like in a full art card. Genesis does a couple of things that I think are, are kind of cool um, in that like it is a, um, a grid based game. So this art, by the way, this one, I think is very good. It's very clean. It looks really nice. Um, th this is great. Like this, um, let me take a look at the artist's name here. Uh, Dahlia. This one is very good. Like this art looks very, very clean. I'm not going to point out ones that I don't think are good because I'm, I'm too nice, but, but, uh, there are some other ones. Okay. Maybe I will like this one that just maybe looks a little uninspired. It's not terrible. All right. But it's also not like the kind of art you would see in magic or flesh and blood. Right. And that's what you want. You want to have the art to compete with those games. And once again, I will bring up my character, right? Like, you know, I know what it is and I, and I, I know it, how much it costs, but I think you got to do it. I think you got to do it. Or you got to, um, you got to like work with your artists to improve them. And, and they are, they are. So I will talk about that as well. By the way, this Inferno Crawler, this one is a, is an epic rare. It just means it is an extended border version, which is great actually. So that's a pretty good hit. In fact, I like that card quite a bit. The Inferno Crawler. I, I think this card looks very nice. This is a very good one. So this is, like I said, it's kind of hit, hit, you know, hit or miss. If all of the cards looked like this and this, I think it would be an incredibly like good looking game. Um, so yeah. Um, so anyway, that, that's one of my big criticisms is the art, right? Like even, even for some of their champions, it can look like it's kind of bland, you know? Um, and I, I do know that they are working with their artists to like improve and all this kind of stuff. I, I do know they have like specific artists. I don't know if I want to call them house artists, but um, it, I know it's something that they're working on, which is good uh, because they, they need to. <laughs> they need to. I, I think the game is good and fun enough that if it had the, it, the art quality, if, if all of the art quality was up there, I think it would be a much easier sell for people who don't know anything about the game. And once again, we're, we're talking about like people who are into card games, looking into getting a card games. The market is super, super saturated now. Your card game, and I've mentioned, mentioned this on Twitter, your card game has to look great. Not good, great. It has to compete with Magic, with Flesh and Blood, because those are the games that, um, you know, people are going to be looking at to, to get into. And, you know, now is a good time to get in on that kind of stuff because people are actually, you know, looking at new games where, you know, historically speaking, they maybe weren't, you know, it was more of a stigma to, you know, try new games, but people are more willing to try new games these days, especially with Hasbro absolutely, you know, shooting themselves in the, you know, the cerebellum. So yeah. That, that's like one of my biggest things for when I look at new card games. If I do consultation work, which I, which I have done some consultation work, uh, the game needs to look amazing, right? You, you has to look good. The game has to play good, but also look good. Um, and I, I think Genesis plays pretty good. Um, it's a very card gamery card game. Like, once you get into like the, the nuts and bolts mechanics of the game, it is a very card gamery card game where you can like react to someone reacting and then it can react to that and it just makes this big old stack of effects and like in the in like the first like um, game that I played with competitive decks, there were many, many turns where it was just like I react to your thing, react, react back, react back, react back, back and forth, back and forth. Um, so yeah, just, just keep that in mind. It's not for like uh, it, it doesn't, I wouldn't say it appeals to a casual audience. Let me put it that way. Even though it is a grid based game, just like um, Iblis, this art is so close to looking amazing. It looks, I don't know how to put it because I'm not an art director. I think it's getting there, but it still doesn't look quite as polished. It looks like, you know, 
partway through the rendering process, but they didn't finish all the rendering, right? Like, to make it to where it looks like something like this. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't look bad, but it also doesn't look like, you know, a AAA thing. I, well, once again, not an art director, so, uh, you know. But, anyway. I forgot what I, <laughs> I forgot the train of thought that I was on. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Genesis, uh, I think, would be really, really tough for um, people who are not already super into card games uh, or into just intricate gaming in general. Like, for example, uh, my partner really enjoys playing Sorcery with me because Sorcery is a game that you can pick up. It's pretty, it's you know, not pretty fun. I think it's a lot of fun. And uh, the, oh, this card's pretty good, too. Taser. Um, it's it's fun to play like sorcery it's easy to play it's fun to play you have these big splashy moments um genesis you got to get into the nuts and bolts it's very very like nuts nuts and bolts kind of kind of deal um which you know definitely is one of the the downsides and you know they're, they're coming out with some kind of uh social i want to I say social gaming kind of things with the um this looks like one of the, uh, the hangings from The Lion King. Um, so they're doing like a PvE thing, basically. Uh, they're, doing, they're doing a PvE thing, which I think is, is a good idea, but it's a lot to ask right now for, for Genesis. It's a good idea, but it's not an actual product. It's a fully do-it-yourself kind of deal. So you have to print, you have to find what the PvE stuff is. You have to learn the rules yourself. You have to kind of set up the campaign. You have to uh, print out the cards. You have to cut the cards out. I mean, once you do that, then it'll be easier to facilitate. But if if you're trying to appeal to like a wide new audience, this is not a good way to do that because it's you're asking a lot for someone who uh, has a lot of other options on the market. Not for PVE. That's that's more of a unique take. Um, though Flesh and Blood will be uh, doing PVE soon. PvE, by the way, if you don't know what that means, it's like a player versus environment kind of thing where you go through a dungeon and you... It's like a co-op mode. Think of it like a co-op mode, right? Um, and, yeah, I like it. I think it's cool. But... Ooh, we have another uh, extended art card. Um, so I, I think it's a good idea. It's just... By virtue of it being like a DIY kind of thing, it, you're just going to run into problems where some people are just going to not want to put in the effort. Um... It would nullify terrible memories. And then, ooh, Electrical Storm. Uh, this is a card that I put in one of my one of my decks. Deck building is another... Shun. I do like Shun. Uh, deck building is another uh, sticking point, in my opinion, for this game. Because it's really clunky. Because the way this works is you have no limit to the number of cards you can put in your deck. I can run, you know, 50 Electrical Storms, but not really. Each card has a point value which is right here, so this is a six points, more or less. Um, and you have a set number of points that you can have in your deck, right? So you can run as many of these as you can until you get to the point cap. Um, and that <laughs> makes deck building really tricky for a new player, because it's like, how, it, it, just makes it, it just makes it tricky, let's put it that way. Um, people who are into wargaming, like Warhammer 40K, uh, probably a little bit easier wrap your head around but for a card game player it's tricky like how, how many of a card you know do you want to run do you run three of these crogs or do you run eight of them or like yeah so i guess if you're like really into deck building nuance like that then um you could be into this i for one love love deck building it's one of my favorite things in card games and i found it to be very clunky when i tried to build my first genesis deck from scratch without like net decking or anything like that if you like deck building challenges, this could be good. But it also, once again, coincides with the fact that I don't think Genesis is, like, currently very new player friendly. Uh, they do have, like, starter decks. This, this art looks great, by the way. I, I do want to point out the art when it looks really good. That looks really good. This looks, something, this looks like something from Arkham Horror. Uh, and that is a very big compliment, because I think Arkham Horror looks fantastic. Um... I lost my train of thought already. I lost my train of thought. Electrical Storm, Inferno Crawler. I do like the Inferno Crawler. We have uh, Bazin. Bazin. Uh, this also looks pretty good. Um, anyway, we got this Death Eater. It looks, it looks pretty good too. 
So, so a lot of those, those are a lot of my big criticisms with it. Um, there's, there's some other things here and there. Like, you know, they're, they're an indie game, so I don't agree with all of the decisions that they make. Um, but, you know, what I do like about it, other than, like, I do like the gameplay. Like, once you actually get, you know, understand how to play, once you play the game, it, it is pretty fun. Uh, which is why I make content about it because I think the game is pretty fun. If I didn't think it was fun, I wouldn't make I wouldn't make videos about it. I wouldn't waste my time or your time. Um, but like I said, not very new player friendly. Um, they, like they do have starter decks, and he, here's one of the things, right? Okay, so I, I I mentioned earlier that they don't have a lot of sets, and they only really have plans for two sets for the entirety of 2023, which is fine, right? You can, you can get away with that. You're a smaller game, you're more nimble. Um, but I also asked if they had plans for uh, starter decks for all both of those sets. And eh, <laughs> it wasn't a slam dunk yes. Let me just put it that way. And I think this game needs, and I think they are doing some more like, um, beginner friendly beginner focused type things like videos and that kind of stuff um they really 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 need a how to build a deck <laughs> video uh they need stuff for like new players to make it easier um like the barrier of entry in terms of monetary value is, is fairly low this is not a, a super expensive game to play um but the barrier of entry in terms of like time required to ooh air soldier uh time required to like learn the game to build decks to kind of just go through all the motions it, it's fairly high it's a lot higher than a lot of the other card games that i play um so yeah the art the the new player experience these are these are really big things that i think could be improved upon that would help elevate genesis from where it is now now, I mentioned at the beginning, like, do I think Genesis is going to survive 2023 with all these other card games that are probably not going to survive? To be completely honest, 100% honest, we have a foil card here, um, I do think it will survive. Um, but not for... Hmm. Let, me, let me put this... Let me, let's, see what, let's see what this card is and we'll talk about this. Uh, Sarah, I think, is probably my favorite character from here. Um, I like the other art more, though. Uh... We have clone. Look at this. Look at this monkey clone. Look at that clone. This is some OG like magic style art. Uh, just by virtue of it being like, you know, Vesuvian doppelganger esque, but with a big old chunky monkey. Um, so, I don't think it's going to survive in, in that it's going to like, unless they change something and they really come out the gates with the next two sets, I think it's just going to be flat, right? Um, Genesis is a game that existed before the TCG boom. And it will probably exist after that because they're a small company. They are very, very um, careful with their finances from what I've seen. And it's a game that is a labor of love. So in my opinion, uh, even if the game didn't do well um, and was tanking, I, I think the creator would probably still find a way to just have it stick around because it's, a, it's like a passion project of his. I think this art in this card looks great too. Um... I wish Kasha looked cooler. Uh, like, oh, this comes comes again to like my criticisms with the art. Um, like for this, there's a lot of just like blank nothing in the background that needs to be bolder. I wish her outfit was more uh, detailed. It looks like she's wearing like a nightgown. Like, once again, I'm I'm gonna be very very brutal when it comes to to, to this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah. It's, it's kind of a hit and miss. It's kind of a toss up. If you like the idea of an arena, you know, grid based game with all of the card gamey stuff, I think it's worth a shot, right? And I think the starter, the current starter decks that they have, uh, the art doesn't look too bad. Um, I think the current uh, starter decks that they have aren't terrible. Um, and so it is a way to play the game uh, with some friends. And, you know, currently that that's what uh, Genesis is. It's a, you know, smaller game to just kind of play with your friends. And I, I'm, to some extent, I kind of respect that, right? Like, it's not about the money for them. It's just about putting out something that they like. Um, and I respect that a lot. Um, but it 
I still have all, all of the all of the critiques. Um, like, it, it's. I can't say it better than just like it. It, it just looks. It just looks like a indie card game. It doesn't look like a AAA card game. And f to be like, to compete with the big dogs, and I don't, they don't necessarily, you know, I don't know, I think, I'm not sure that, that they want to, but um, if they wanted to, they would need to work on some stuff. They would need to work on some stuff. Um, one thing I didn't talk about, that I, I do want to mention here is I opened up three booster boxes and I pretty I got like a, a bunch of everything. The set is so small that just opening up a like three booster boxes I got everything and that really really disincentivizes me from opening more product. Right. So if I wasn't making this video I probably would have not opened this box because I I got everything. Uh, so like one thing is just the boxes aren't that fun to open and I think they know I think they know this right. It's something that I've, I've, I think they've talked about before. Um, yeah, they, they know that the boxes, like, they're just kind of, like, not fun. They need, they need more chase to it, right? They don't necessarily need, like, you know, legendaries like Flesh and Blood has or something. But, but, that does make it more fun to open up boxes. To have, like, the, the marbles or the legendaries. They do have this kind of stuff, so, like, a foil. And then, like, these kind of, like, full art stuff. But, it would have been cooler if these were, like, alternate arts, right? instead of having the extended borders. And the foils are so rare that, yeah, it's kind of cool to get one, but like, I'm not gonna open up like 10 boxes just to get like, you know, two copies of whatever rare and foil. Um, and the fact that you can have like a crap load of any given card in the deck means that like, if you wanted to foil it out, oh, good luck with that. Uh, I guess that is a chase to some degree, but it's not a fun chase. It's not a fun chase. Um, yeah. Like, a fun chase would be, like, the Marvel Dragons from Flesh and Blood. Everyone lo loves opening the Marvel Dragons. You can get the rare versions of the Dragons really easily. But the Marvel ones are fancy, and they look amazing, right? And But you only need a couple of them. You don't need, like, 30 of them or whatever. Not That's hyperbole. You don't need 30 of any of these cards. But, like, you know, five Infernal Crawlers or whatever it is. Um, like, a Marvel, Marvel Tomaltai, you need one. You need one Marvel Tomaltai. Uh... And so it's like really exciting when you get it. And it's like fairly rare too. Um, so, yes. Uh, I'm trying to think about the other points that I had because, you know, I'm opening the packs. Packs, it's fun. It's fun to open up the packs. We've got this Cobra. Uh, there's a lot of animal um, and like bugs and stuff, which is fine. Like, once again, the taser art looks good. Um, but it, it makes it look kind of not exciting. I don't know why. I don't know how to put it, but like if you flip through these, like these are the rares, right? Like which which cards from here look really exciting? Like and like they look flashy and they're like powerful. I do like the Infernal Crawler. Uh and this card's really cool too. I like the Electro Pheromones. I think it's a cool card. But like a lot of these are just like they look like dudes you would fight in an RPG. But not bosses. They look like like fodder you'd fight. This card's great, though. Malefic Impalement. Uh, so that's another criticism. Um, and maybe maybe they, they want to have, you know, more monsters and stuff. But it'd be cool to have, like, more humanoid units and, and stuff like that. Like, a, you know, some... I know there's a, the one angel, but you can have, like, more angels. You can have, like, a, an assassin or a knight or... You know, a wizard or, or or something. I know I know the flavors are just it's a lot of monsters and stuff. Um, but at least for me personally, uh, flipping through just looks they, they don't look like rares. Like right? these look like like uh, magic, like common magic cards. Not all common, but you know. I hope I hope <laughs> I hope they get that crossed. Um, I didn't I didn't get the art of the champion that I that I really liked either, but uh, that that's okay. Uh, we'll we'll have uh, Sarah here at the at the top because um, she she is I think my favorite character from this uh, from this set. She like really synergizes with like a bunch of having a bunch of uh, dudes on the field, which is, which is cool. Um, but once again, like I think the art fidelity can be increased significantly. Um, now like yeah. So anyway, let's open up this final thing. Um, closing thoughts. I don't think Genesis is going to die. Even if it does very poorly, um, 
but I also don't think it's going to like skyrocket or anything like that. Um, but this could be like a, a decent number of things. Ooh, we have a foil electrical storm, which is uh, really, really good looking. We have a foil malefic impalement, which is great because I think this card's fantastic. And a foil mute Nihon Zaru. I think this was a very good pull. I think, I think this card's really good. Um, I run these in my, my Sarah deck. That, once again, <laughs> I, I can't. Here's, here's another thing. Like, you can look at the, the foils. This is just, like, a quality control thing. The foils are, like, super curled. Um, I don't necessarily blame uh, Haunted Castle Studios and Genesis for this. Um, because, once again, I have a little bit of leeway for it being an indie game, right? I know the budget constraints, and I know they're, you know they don't have the money to put into it. But at the same time, we also have other indie games like Sorcery and Grand Archive that have amazing card quality, amazing artwork, right? Um, like all the Sorcery art is handmade. Um, all of the, I know it's a completely different art style, but all of the uh, Grand Archive cards have amazing art like this. This is not, this is my own character, but this is from a Grand Archive artist. Uh, haunt you, shout out to Haunt you. Um, so it's like, yes, I get it, I get it. But in this day and age, like if you if you really want to hang, you, you really have to present. And uh, I think that's where Genesis is lacking. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully Genesis can get to a point where like all the cards look fantastic. Like when every single card looks fantastic, not just like 10% of them. When like every single card looks like it's from like uh, a triple A game. Doesn't have to look exactly like Magic or Flesh and Blood. It can have its own unique style, but the there is something to be said for like overall quality. Um, and then start a product. Definitely, Genesis definitely needs to start a product. I like that they're doing PVE, but once again, I think it's like, it's a very, it's a very, um, I don't wanna say it's a very big ask, for someone who's playing a very, very small game. And what you need to do is you need to make it super, super easy. If people, cause people are gonna be very wary going into it anyway, because it's not one of the bigger games, right? They're gonna be like, oh, it's a small game. Um, and then I have to print the cards out and then like cut them myself. Like I know, I, I know like there's like budget reasons for not doing stuff like that, but it would help. It, it would definitely help. So, um, once again, this is kind of like a little a little critique on Genesis. I like the game, and I like the creator of the game, and I think it's fun. Um, but at the same time, um, I do have some genuine critiques, and I, and I do really think that Genesis is squarely in like that that indie B tier of card games, right? In my opinion, we have Grand Archive and Sorcery at the the S tier, right? They they are like the best uh, in terms of quality for indie card games. In fact, they are so good that I think they compete with the big dogs, with Magic and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! in terms of uh, art, design, they just look the part. Um, whereas Genesis doesn't exactly look the part. Um, I, if I wanted to talk about how to correct it, other than like the suggestions I've given, it would probably be like a very long three hour conversation. But at the end of the day, if you like the way this looks, if you want to play like a grid based game where you move your characters around on a grid, I'm not even talking about how like there is also that barrier of you need a specific kind of play mat to, to play this game, which, you know, is inherent with all these kind of like grid based games. Um, I, I think it's worth checking out, right? I think it could be a good second card game for a lot of folks or maybe a first card game if you don't buy a lot of card games because there's very, very infrequent sets, right? We only have two more sets coming out this year, which is their goal, their goal is to, to. Whereas we have something like Origins that has like some reprint cards in it and the previous set also had a lot of reprint cards in it. There's there's a lot of, you know, uh, non-reprint cards in, in this set as well. But my point is, is there's, the card pool for this game is not a lot and it doesn't get a lot bigger because there's only like very, very few sets. So. That might also appeal to you, right? Um, you can say that, you know, it's good for wallet fatigue, but it also might be like too, too little. Um, which is why I said could be a good second game. And also, like I said, I don't think this game is gonna be going anywhere. Uh, I think it's just gonna be kind of like staying the course. So, I mean, I, fair, I think it's fairly safe to pick it up if you can find like some people to play with. Anyway, 
uh, yeah, that's that's my ramblings on Genesis. Um, <laughs> I could probably talk a lot more about this too. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. I'm curious to see the next two sets. The art is starting to look very good. Um, I have seen some, you know, very very nice pieces, and I just I just wish every single piece of art looked that good for for this game. And I think that would go a long way of changing people's perceptions because, like I said, as of now, it, it does look like an indie B tier game. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.